welcome back to another video. In this video we are going to take a look at using Arduino for a power supply. It's going to be kind of a tutorial and later on in the video I will discuss my progress with uh, a power supply from the Arduino. So why would you want a power supply driven by Arduino? Well, uh, the main reason is that you can adjust the pulse width using simple code. So, whenever your uh, power supply overheats or it reaches it, it's reaching its charge or anything that you want to limit. For example, if it becomes too hot or when it's overcharging, you want to shut it down as fast as possible and as accurate as possible and also of course as simple as possible with a simple code the Arduino is able to do that and you can simply make any power supply for example driving motors or uh, charging batteries capacitor banks in my case and it's really easy to do and I'm going to show you how so the first thing you want to do is check your Arduino. For this tutorial to work you must see if, if the ch chipset is compatible. For example this one. Is the Atmega328. And you can just get this for 5 bucks from uh, eBay or AliExpress. The neck, this one is the Nano, which is also the Atmega 328. This is, for example, if you want a small power supply or anything like that. You can also use the Arduino Pro Mini, which has the same chipset, but it's a little harder to program because you need to do additional things. But if you don't have the Atmega328 chipset, this tutorial will be not compatible for your Arduino. So whenever you want to know something, you look on the internet if, it's a, if the thing you want to know has already been asked before and maybe someone worked it out already. So we are, if we google a timer PWM cheat sheet for Arduino, you get, you get this page. And you see it has all kinds of time timer timers with their corresponding pins and all kinds of weird code bytes. But what does it all mean? How how can we know what, what what to do? So for that we have to Google its data sheet. The data sheet for the for the Atmel Atmega 328. It's a really long data sheet. As you can see, it's about 660 pages. So I'm going to take a look where the where the information is. So here we have a very basic example of driving a normal square wave. As you can see, we divide the pins on nine and ten put 9 and 10 as outputs and write the corresponding duty cycle as you can see there are two different duty cycles that's to uh, make sure the switches don't don't short circuit or something like that and now we're going to take a look at what the kind of waveforms it produces as you can see, here is the Arduino set up to an oscilloscope and normal square waves just as we expected. The one with the lower duty cycle and one with the higher. But it's this will if you just use this as a power supply, you will create short circuits in every single uh, uh, half cycle. So we have to invert these waveforms. 
at the moment it's also switching at 490 hertz that's not enough for a normal working power supply so how should we fix that so as we saw in the cheat sheet that pin 9 and 10 which we are using are controlled by timer 1 and if we go to the data sheet about page 131 we can see the register description for timer 1 and here we can see all kinds of complicated stuff but we will fish out what to do so here we see non-inverting mode in fast PWM currently the Arduino is set to that because it's non-inverting as we saw so we have to put it in inverting mode and COM1A1 and COM1A0 are one uh, or pin 1 uh, or in this case pin 9 and COM1B1 and COM1B0 are pin 10 so we want to flip the waveform of pin 10 around and if we go back we have to put those two in a one position because one means on zero means off in simple binary so we don't have to change these first two only five and four so what do we do this is just zero zero one one zero 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 and if we change that if we go and look up if we google for binary to hexadecimals we can get a conversion scheme so one one zero what or i mean one zero zero one one and four zeros as we saw here one two three four so if we convert that to hexadecimal we get the hexadecimal value for 30 and if you use that in our program we said T C C R 1 and if you look at it's T C C R 1 A as you can see right here T C C R 1 A equals to T C C R 1 A and then we OR we OR it, it just, that's just the shift plus the symbol above your enter key that should give a OR operator and then we just OR it with the hexadecimal code and as, if it's right it should run not to forget the semicolon and it works just fine so if you're going to upload it to the Arduino and now we are going to take a look at what the oscilloscope makes from it and as expected the waveforms are currently flipped around so now we can go on with our power supply and not worry about short circuits that the a faulty signal provides and just to prove it I'm not going to do anything and just comment the change out and upload it once again as you can see I commented it out and, and it's back again to the original waveform so now we want to change the frequency and for that we are, going, we are not going to make it harder than it is we are just going to copy paste this code that's on the cheat sheet and we paste it in here and here we see a function for the setting and what's the setting we want? 
let's say we want 31 kilohertz so we change the setting to 0 and 0 1 so let's see if it runs and it works just fine now let's see if we have a change in frequency and sure enough we can see that the frequency has changed even the oscilloscope can't see it fine so we have to zoom out and as we can see 31.3 kilohertz Now if you want to use other pins like 5 and 6 to achieve a frequency of 63 kilohertz you just go to the data sheet again with control F and we search for TCCR0 and we look for the beginning which is around the beginning the first note that's come up and here it is timer zero and if we scroll back down All this is pretty useful, but if you don't have experience with it, it's going to be pretty hard to understand. So right here is the register for pin 5 and 6. So if you want another part for this tutorial, for example, building the actual power supply for high power applications, such as driving massive motors or big power supplies for your coil gun or real gun so in order to do that for me to do that you want to subscribe and like this video if there are enough likes and and and, and new subscribers that are interested in this I'm going to make a detailed video about how to make a power supply and drive your motor or coil gun so this is what I was attempting at my power supply and it's, it's more complicated as you can see for example it's using different kinds of things like this this just changes the what we have done before but in a different way and here we create uh, custom waveforms that allows me to shift the faces uh, to the amount of grease that is desired and I'm going to show you how it looks like so if we set the waveform to 100 kilohertz and a phase shift of 90 degrees and we run it let's go to the oscilloscope So there you can see the waveform. It's currently switching at the 100 kilohertz. And if we shift it, you can definitely see it's exactly shifted 90 degrees. But uh, I require four of these waveforms and the Arduino only has two timers that are accessible so I'm going to have to look at the solution currently I'm working on something else and I'm going to show you what it is so what I was trying here was high side switching for the MOSFETs because that's required for driving the full bridge converter I'm designing and what we can see here is here is boost converter here is the switching for the boost converter 
that delivers a, a voltage to this half bridge push pull driver for this MOSFET and that's currently set up in high side mode because as we can see this is the source this is the gate and this is the load but it produces very ugly waveforms as you can see here this is due to the gate not being charged fast enough so we get a slope like this but if we try to fix it we get a more waveform that looks like this and this would be very acceptable if we use a Schmidt trigger but it also induces various inefficiencies for example drain to source doesn't go fully to ground and stuff like that so my current design for the high side driver is seen right here and as you can see it produces very nice square waves it's, it's if we look at the load it's currently dissipating 3 kilowatts so this is a 3 kilowatt uh, MOSFET driver and as you can see it's in half bridge configuration for if we put a transformer in here we can easily make a 3 kilowatt switching half bridge converter and if we take at the losses for the MOSFET it's only 50 watts but we can make it even lower for example if we take a look at the drain to source voltage there is this very tiny gap right here and as you can see it's not directly going to zero and therefore there are a couple of watts in losses uh, this circuit is just a push-pull half bridge and half bridge driving a half bridge with the bootstrap and coming in the voltage from the boost converter and yeah that's it but it's not perfect I need to perfect this design to drive more powerful power supplies and I'll keep an update in the future on this kind of stuff and hopefully I'll be able to drive even greater power than 3 kilowatts for example 5 kilowatts or something like that so there are a couple of topologies I have yet to use for high side gate drivers for n-channel MOSFET currently I'm using the bootstrap drive but there's also the transformer coupled drive which is very popular and I have to try that out and maybe it will work so I hope you liked this video and I'll be working more on the high side driver and hopefully soon I'll create a working power supply and from that point we can go uh, making the prototype and then we can do the first couple of shots and improve from there on so please subscribe and i'll see you next time